Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk about the cardinals or the cardinal numbers. This is one of the most requested video, so let's get started. So cardinals is basically just like the natural numbers uh in layman terms, you know, uh you see is a measurement of size or in this case we call this the cardinality. So basically, it, the sequence of the cardinal numbers is again just like the natural numbers. So we start from zero and then one, two, three, four, five, six, blah 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 blah. Uh, and then of course you have n. N could be any finite uh number, finite positive integer basically. And then after all the positive uh natural numbers then you arrive at the first transfinite number which is also the smallest uh transfin transfinite cardinal which is the alpha no which we write it this way and then after alpha no comes the alpha one and etc so basically at the beginning it's just the same as the natural numbers one all the way to the um all the uh finite natural numbers and then you start with alpha no and then alpha one so again alpha one is the i mean alpha no is the smallest transfinite cardinal and then the second smallest is the alpha one and so on and again this is cardinals is the measure of size so for example let's say there's a bag and if you have uh, five items inside or five things inside then the cardinal number of this will be five and if there's let's say a google number of things in there then the cardinal cardinal number would be a google if there's three three number of things inside then the cardinal number would be three three so it's just the measurement of size and again not to be confused with ordinal ordinal is not a measurement of size ordinal is ordering so let's say cardinal would be zero one two three four five blah 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 ordinal would be first second third fourth fifth etc so that's the main difference between cardinals and ordinals but in this video we're not going to talk about ordinals so very straightforward basically uh but i think a lot of people saying they get confused about cardinal but basically it's actually a very simple idea and of course in this video we are not gonna focus on the finite cardinals so let's say the zero one two three four five uh it will include all the finite natural numbers including three three or grams number something like that you know but of course we're not gonna talk about the finite we're gonna talk about what most people want to know which is the transfinite cardinal which is uh these two over here uh alpha no and alpha one so the first transfinite cardinal is alpha no of course and it is basically what it means is the first um the countable or listable infinity so it represents the countable or listable infinity so basically um countable in here it means you can list them so that's why i prefer uh the name listable instead of countable because to some people it may be confusing they might say how can you count to infinity so that's why i say it's listable but i think the official term is countable so basically you can list them so let's say the set of all natural numbers is zero one two three four five so you can list them out even though you have to list them forever so you need an infinite amount of time to do that but still at least it's listable that's why it's called the countable or listable infinity and this would be the smallest size of infinity that's why uh it's represented by alpha no and cardinality is defined in terms of bijection so what is bijection bijection basically just means uh, if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of the two sets which basically means if you can pair the elements up one to one then you know that's by ejection and the famous cantor's diagonals proof shows that there's no bijection from 
alpha null to alpha one. What does that mean? That means they are not the same size. If you cannot pair the items up one to one, then they are different size. If you can pair them up one to one, then they are the same size. So that's the definition, or that's the conclusion from the famous Cantor's uh, diagonal proof, which shows that alpha node and alpha one is different size. So of course, alpha one is bigger than alpha zero. So let's look at some examples of the smallest transfinite cardinal alpha null. So the first example would be the set of all natural numbers or basically all the integers. All the integers, so let's say again, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, blah, 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 3, 3, Rayo's number, etc. All the, um, I mean again, all the integers is has the um, cardinal number of alpha null. And the second example will be the set of square numbers, cube numbers, and prime numbers. Well, basically, they have just all the integers. So this would be a subset of all the natural numbers. But again, um, since they can be uh, shown that they, you can pair these two one to one, therefore, they are the same size, and both are uh, the size of alpha null. No. Because again, um, uh, let's say let's for example let's use the even numbers as the example. So let you know to most people it seems that even numbers is smaller than the set of even numbers is smaller than the set of all the integers because you know it looks like it's half the size, but in fact actually it's not. It's not half the size because you can pair them up one to one. You can pair one to two, two to four, three to six, four to eight. You can pair them up forever. That's why they are the same size, even though it seems like. The integers is twice the size of the even numbers or odd numbers but based on this proof bijection since there's a bijection they are the same size they're all they're both countable infinity and the third example would be the set of rational numbers so the example would be uh you know one one over one, one over two, one, o one over three, two over one, two over two, two over three, blah 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 and again there's infinite number of them so but it is a countable infinity so any any basically the you if you can represent the number in terms of ratio that's why it's called uh rational numbers is ratio you can see the word ratio in it and all the set of rational numbers is alpha no again because again why is be simply because there's a bijection between the rational numbers and all the natural numbers you can pair them up one to one let's say this one can pair up to one this one would be two this one would be three you can pair them up one by one therefore they're the same size same infinity and the fourth example would be the set of constructible numbers and i'm not going to explain too much what what is a constructible number basically it means uh, any number uh, in geometric sense you can draw them out with a pencil or pen or compass etc you can google it um, to see what that is uh, and basically uh, the set of constructible numbers is again a uh, countable infinity so that's why it's alpha null and the fifth example would be the set of algebraic numbers so basically um, so what I'm not going to explain too much what is algebraic numbers, but constructible numbers is uh, is a subset of algebraic numbers. So one of the examples would be the roots of integers. Uh, and also all the natural numbers and all the square numbers, cube numbers, prime numbers are also a subset of uh, algebraic numbers. So one, two, and four, they are all <laughs> part of algebraic numbers. But still, the set of algebraic numbers is a countable infinity because again, you can pair them up one to one, uh, which is bijection. And I'm gonna explain some more detail below why they are the same size. And then the last example, the sixth example, would be the set of computable numbers, which is uh a f is countable infinity because uh basically this a countable amount of Turing machines so this the number of Turing machines is a countable infinity that's why the set of countable numbers is alpha no 
And next, after alpha node, of course, is alpha one. So alpha one is the uncountable or unlistable infinity. So in this case, you cannot list them like this. So you cannot list them uh, one to one, like one, two, three, four, four is unlistable. That's why is a uncountable infinity is much, much, much bigger than alpha null. So alpha one is much bigger than alpha null. Um, is basically in infinitely bigger than this one because you cannot even list them. One of the quick example would be all the real numbers, you know, all the decimal numbers because on the number line uh, between, let's say between one and two, there's an infinite number of numbers between one and two. And even you pick a smaller interval, let's say between 1.1 and 1.2, 1, 1 there's again an infinite number of numbers between 1.1 and, uh, and 1.2. Doesn't matter what interval you pick on the number nine, there's always an infinite number of numbers between two points and that's why it's unlistable. You, not, you cannot list them. You're always missing something. And that will be a quick example. And then, um, so again, the first example here would be the set of irrational numbers, which is uncountable, uncountable infinity. So that's why it's alpha one. The second example would be the set of transcendental numbers. Uh, transcendental numbers, here are some examples, pi, e, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can Google it yourself, what it means. And then the third example is the set of uncomputable numbers. Um, and then the fourth example would be the set of normal numbers. Again, a lot of people ask what is a normal number. Basically, again, you can Google it, but basically is it means the, the infinite sequence of its digits is digi distributed uniformly. And this is one of the example here. Uh, actually, all the normal numbers are artificial ones. So this would be one of the example here, triple nouns, constant, 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Basically, you list out all the positive integers. Of course, it has infinite amount of digits. So they are all artificial numbers um, so far. Um, and we only know a few of them because they are all artificial. But it is a um, uncountable infinity. And then the fifth example would be the set of real numbers, obviously. Basically, all of these, one to four, are all part of real numbers. Uh, basically, all of these as well. All of these so far are real numbers. So, of course, the set of real numbers is uh, uncountable, infinity. Um, but again, they are all the same size. Everything here are the same size. Same for this one. Everything here, one to six, are the same size since they have the same cardinal of a node so one to six even though some of them are a subset of this one but they are all the same size same for here even though transcendental numbers is a subset of real numbers but they are the same size because they all have the same cardinal alpha one uh, and basically you can kind of say they all of these has the same um, bijection bijec so you can pair them up one to one that's why they are the same size um, and then here are some of the rules to determine why some of them are countable and some of them are uncountable. So basically, if let's say a set of countable, a countable set plus a countable set, the resulting set would be countable. So countable plus countable is countable. That's why it's alpha null. So what it means basically, in other words, alpha null plus alpha null is equal to alpha null. Same size. So I think maybe that's the weird part or this is the confusing part. And then the second rule, countable plus uncountable is equal to uncountable, which is alpha one. So in other words, alpha null plus alpha one equals alpha one. And the last one, uncountable plus uncountable equals uncountable, This, which is quite straightforward, alpha one. In other words, alpha one plus alpha one equals to alpha one. And this is why or how we can determine why some of these are uncountable and some of them are countable. So basically some examples here, all the odd numbers plus all the even numbers, of course, is equal to all the integers, right? And this is basically number one over here. So alpha naught plus alpha naught is alpha naught because the size of all the odd numbers is alpha naught and the size of all the even numbers is again alpha naught. That's why 
the size of all integers is also alpha naught based on the first rule over here. And then the second example would be, um, and that's explain why the set of all integers and set of square numbers, they are both the same size and why they're both alpha naught. And the second example is rational, all the rational numbers plus all the irrational numbers, of course, which is equal to all the real numbers. This would be rule number two over here. So rational numbers, which I already said it over here is alpha null. So alpha null plus alpha one is equal to alpha one. So this is the second rule over here. So alpha null plus alpha one equals alpha one. So that's why the real numbers is just alpha one and all the irrational numbers alpha one. And again, if you know that, another thing to know that if you know that this one is alpha one, or this one, if this one is uncountable and this one is countable, this one must be uncountable because of the rule over here. So let's say this is unknown, then automatically you would know this is uncountable. If this is countable and this is uncountable, very simple. The third example would be algebraic numbers, all the algebraic numbers plus all the transcendental numbers is equal to, of course, all the real numbers. Again, the transcendental number is basically all the numbers that is not algebraic. So that's why um, algebraic plus transcendental is equal to all the real numbers. Again, this is rule number two. Alpha null, algebraic numbers is alpha null. Transcendental, let's say you uh, you don't know. Let's say you don't know what is tra uh, if transcendental numbers are countable or uncountable, but you know that real numbers is uncountable. That's why this one must be uncountable because countable plus something which is equal to uncountable, then this thing over here must be uncountable. Second rule over here. The fourth example, all the computable numbers plus all the uncomputable numbers, of course, is equal to all the real numbers. Again, rule number two, alpha null plus alpha one equals alpha one. Again, if you don't know this one, then you can simply tell by this one and this one. If this one is uncountable and this one is countable, this one must be uncountable. And then the last rule, same thing, norm, all the normal numbers plus all the non-normal numbers equals all the real numbers. Again, rule number two. So this is basically my video. Not sure uh, if that's answer some of your question. And this is again, one of the most requested video. Um, but this is a very interesting topic. But anyway, thanks for watching and have a nice day.